Hello everyone and welcome for this new uh, live session release for Xen Orchestra 5.77. This is almost the end of the year and uh, this release is uh, pretty huge in fact. Um, we have a lot to announce, a lot of new things that we want to, to explore with you. And uh, because we have a lot to say and not a lot of time to do so, uh, Oliver, I will let you dig into the, this new release. Thank you, Mark. Uh, hi, everyone. And uh, indeed, as Mark said, there's a lot of new exciting stuff uh, in this release. And uh, it's a bit long, in fact, to explain in all details, but um, I will make a, a, a quick recap uh, first. So um, the main big thing uh, that we uh, announced for this uh, release is a major improvement made, made on the proxy side. So in very short, um, it's not entirely new components, but the usage we made possible now uh, by using proxies, uh, by making them a lot easier to use, can truly transform the way you are planning your infrastructure. So let me give you some example. Right now, if you have one central Zen orchestra to manage all your hosts, some host that could be everywhere in the world in different sites, you needed a tunnel to connect to those hosts from the central XOA. So an extended L2 network, an overlay network, a VPN, uh, a GRE tunnel or things like that. And so we decided that it might be cool if we could use the XO proxies that were initially designed for the backup to be used for uh, transferring all the traffic to connect your hosts. So the general principle is you deploy a proxy to remote sites, could be behind a firewall or net, it's not a problem. And then you uh, connect it from the main Zen Orchestra. And through that, you can access your uh, XCPNG hosts on multiple private networks all around the world in a secure manner since the tunnel is made directly between Zen Orchestra, the main XOA, and the proxies. And so it's like with one unique Zen Orchestra, you can manage everything without having you know, special uh, multiple Zen Orchestra deploy on other hosts and so on. So it's entirely transparent to make the management, like you can you know, create VMs, migrate VMs, uh, access to the console, and do the usual stuff. But also, uh, all the traffic used when you do a backup or continuous replication, for example, will automatically flow through the proxy. So it means you can replicate uh, one site to another site without any tunnel, which just internet between uh, the two sites. So it's very convenient. And now you could just connect a proxy through uh, the UI. So you, you click on connect a proxy, which, which you created previously with a, a deploy script that we, we created just for that. And that's it. And, and from there, you could manage and replicate everything into multiple sites. So that's very... Uh, um, convenient, uh, pretty straightforward to deploy. And uh, to that, you could you know, scale your infrastructure without any issue. So if you want to get more details, uh, I wrote uh, a guide uh, in the link uh, in the section so you could understand more with, um, um, let's say, a better example on how to achieve that. So feel free to test it, come back to us. And if you have feedback or you want to you know, have ideas on how to even improve this for your use case, let us know. We'll be happy to. Uh, to assist you and to, to work together on this. So the next thing is related to warm migration. So um, warm migration is a kind of hybrid solution between uh, live or hot migrate and cold migrate, or hence the name warm. Um, so the idea was basically born when we had to migrate our own infrastructure from um, a provider uh, giving us Xeon Intel processors and we wanted to migrate to our own uh, rack uh, in, a, in a colo place where we had fresh new Epic servers. And as you can imagine, you can't live migrate a VM uh, running on Intel Xeons to uh, name the Epic CPU because of it's too different. And so you have to migrate it uh, while the VM is off. The problem with that, uh, if you do a cold migration, is during all the migration, um, the so you have to transfer the, the disk with it. And if you have a big disk, uh, it's pretty slow to make all the transfer while the VM is off, while your service inside the VM is off. So we wanted to use another solution. A solution we uh, communicate about was to use the continuous replication feature bundled in Zen Orchestra to do that. But it was a kind of, let's say, 
not easy to configure or to create and so on. So the idea uh, is in fact relatively simple. So we made a first replication while the VM is running on the source and we create a copy of this VM on destination. Uh, for example, the first replication we take hours, but it, it doesn't matter since the VM is running on the source. And when the first replication is done, we rerun the job, uh, the replication job, and it will only replicate the delta, which is pretty fast. And it's only during this phase on replicating the delta that we have to shut down the VM. And then when it's done, after a few minutes, we could start the VM on destination. There's no problem because uh, you stop and start the VM uh, uh, on source and destination. So no CPU difference problem. Uh, you could even do that for very old Zen server versions. It works well to, to get a migration path for VMs for very old Zen server version uh, down to uh, 6.5. And so one migration is doing exactly that, but in completely uh, uh, fully automated fashion, meaning that you just click on the button, you select the destination storage in any uh, a pool that you are connected to with Zen Orchestra, and it will do all of that for you in a fully transparent fashion, meaning that, uh, for example, if you take um, um, remove on source and start on destination, it means that after you click on the one migration uh, button and you selected the target, it will do it will do the first replication, then it will shut down the original VM, make the uh, delta replication, and then start the VM on destination and remove the VM on source. Everything done with one click. So that's pretty convenient and very flexible for all the use case you might have for, let, let's call that complicated migration scenarios. So a powerful feature, and we already have some hints to even uh, improve it in some cases where, for example, you have very, very large disks and maybe uh, a one replication delta would be not enough and another pass would be required. So we're working on that, but your feedback will be truly appreciated to see how we could even uh, you know, improve this uh, uh, new feature, which is truly, truly convenient. That's it for the one migration thing. Um, let's go for uh, the next one, the REST API. So we added a new endpoint. So as a reminder, the REST API is a lot easier to use than the uh, JSON of a WebSocket uh, API, so JSON RPC through WebSockets. Uh, it's just uh, full REST, meaning that in simple curl or any HTTP call can get uh, the thing uh, you need. And uh, with this API, we added VM snapshots and DDI snapshots. So you can fetch all the information related to that with uh, those two new endpoints. And remember that you could use filters to, um, to filter, the, uh, for example, all the snapshots of one VM or things like that. Um, so the documentation of our filters is pretty extensive, so feel free to, to take a look. So it, you can combine the REST API plus the filters to get a truly interesting tools to get the results you need for whatever use case you might have requiring to fetch those data. Um, then uh, let's switch to the um, XCPNG 8.3 alpha version. So uh, we announced that... Um, I think it was, uh, yeah, November uh, the uh, 20th. So basically, uh, we managed to get a new incremental version of XCPNG. So I invite you to take a look on it, to read it. Uh, but in very, very short, the idea behind this alpha is to provide a basis for our new release, which is not an LTS version. So it's not made for long-term support, but it's made to include all our new features we are developing here at Vates. Uh, right into XCPNG. We couldn't do that with an LTS, obviously, because uh, what matters for an LTS is stability and security. So we only uh, merge and integrated updates related to security mostly. But for 8.3, it's far uh, easier to introduce new features. So take a look on the alpha version of blog posts. You will learn more there. And uh, obviously, uh, that's just to start. We'll have uh, more to come uh, very soon. And that's it for the uh, XCPNG 8.3 Alpha. Let's talk about the uh, some improvement we made on Exolite. So expect more uh, visible changes in December. But just for this month, we managed to uh, improve uh, the fact that um, now Exolite could be loaded in your phone, for example, and our, our responsive design is uh, a lot improved. So that's uh, almost usable. Uh, directly from your phone if you don't have any uh, uh, regular desktop to access to your host if you want to do basic stuff. So we want to get something that is responsive for some use cases where you know you, you are uh, in a kind of specific situation where 
uh, it's easier to use your mobile device than a desktop to maybe just check very basic stuff. So we did that and it continued to be improved and we'll keep that in mind when we add more features to uh, Exolite. Uh, so the next one is uh, an existing feature we improved. Uh, so there's uh, a decent number of people using Nagios or uh, similar tools like uh, uh, Centrion and, and things like that that are compatible with Nagios uh, that are using the backup reports. So um, basically the feature is when you do a backup, uh, when it's done, you can have a report directly sent to your monitoring application, uh, Nagios in this case. And it was pretty basic in a way that it just sent the fact that if the backup succeed or failed without knowing which VM failed or succeed exactly into the job. So we modified the, the backup report and now you have uh, the detailed information regarding exactly which VM succeed and which VM failed on your backup job. So for a monitoring application, it's a lot easier to track what could be the problem exactly. And if a job failed, maybe it's just one VM among, I don't know, 50 VM or things like that. So uh, that's more precise and useful for our Nagios users around here. Let's move to the next topic. Uh, this was asked uh, for, uh, for example, if you have users using uh, one-time password, uh, using OTE or things like that. Uh, if your user lost, for example, his recovery key and so on, they couldn't simply log in again to their Zen Orchestra um, uh, system. So we've been asked to allow the possibility for an administrator to disable the uh, one-time password uh, thing so they could just reconnect and reconfigure their uh, uh, extra two-factor authentication inside their uh, user zone and then, you know, get back on the feeds and access the software. So uh, again, that is coming from the community and, and thanks for people suggesting those kind of ideas. It helps us to, uh, you know, uh, provide more features and being closer to what people truly need on the field. After that, uh, we got uh, OVA generation. So as you might remember, we introduced OVA generation, uh, I think it was last year or something like that. Uh, we, we drastically improve it. Uh, and we know people like this feature because they allow us to uh, discuss, I would say, with other people using other virtualization platforms. So you could build your VM with XCP engines and orchestra. And when you're done, you can export it in OVA for whatever else. Uh, you know, so it's basically interoperability and we are, you know, committed to provide something that is truly easy to integrate with other platforms. And this month we uh, managed to get uh, OVA generation a lot faster uh, by some, you know, uh, walkarounds, I would say. But in the end of the day, uh, the results is truly promising since uh, it's a lot faster to generate one, take a lot bit of more test, but... I mean, uh, since it's a lot faster, that's uh, that's better than what it was before. Um, the uh, not the last, but uh, almost item uh, is um, regarding backup. So that's the last item for this release um, among you know bug fixes. But uh, in short, we improved a lot the um, backup generation on the block-based backup method. If you remember. Uh, we have the uh, historical VHD backup, and since S3, uh, we also provided a way to, uh, let's say, uh, split the backup files into two megabyte blocks. Um, and for this kind of backup, we made a various improvement, helping in the case where something is going wrong at the time of the backup, at the time of the merge, or things like that. Uh, we manage at the next job to get everything back on track. So this is useful because, you know, we have hundreds or, or even thousand users running on this and there's always among those people sometimes a network issue a disk issue and so on so sometimes things go south so that's why we managed to make it more resilient to those scenarios and being able to resume when something failed for example for the next run of the backup that's basically reducing us a lot of uh, tickets when people have issues that we could fix manually. So now it's fixed automatically. So that's uh, better for you and for us at the same time. And final thing that you could read on our blog post that will be published today, uh, the fact that I won't say we switched to Mastodon, but basically uh, we created a Mastodon instance, obviously inside a, a VM hosted on top of XCPNG inside our colo. But uh, if you want to follow us on this social network, which is open source and decentralized, 
a lot closer to our values here at Vates. Uh, we created uh, uh, four accounts, uh, one for XCPNG, one for Zen Orchestra, one for Vates, and one for myself. So feel free to uh, uh, follow us there uh, if you like. We won't uh, stop publishing on Twitter, but it will be very likely that Twitter posts will lead to Mastodon and then to the content we are publishing. So we try to get also help this uh, great network to get more people used on board. Um, because it's a great network, as I said, being decentralized and open source is uh, very close to the thing what we are promoting as a company here, as we are an open source editor, uh, you know, giving you on-prem solution, which is uh, decentralized by definition uh, against the cloud, a central public cloud. So I would say that's uh, something we uh, uh, that makes sense to us. Um, and uh, that's it for me. That's a wrap. Uh, I don't know, Mark, if you have uh, anything else to, to add, but on my side, uh, that's it. Yeah, that, that, I just wanted to add that uh, we have already some um, some interesting events that are coming next year. Of course, there is the FOSDEM that is coming in February. And for the first time, um, we will also be at the Cloud Fest in March. So expect some news um, early next year about that topic. But uh, if uh, if uh, you are going to the Cloud Fest, which is a large, very large European event around uh, virtual infrastructure usage, I would say, um, not that we will be there. So it's a, it's a great opportunity. We'll be there with some of our IT engineers. So it will be a great opportunity to meet our team and to to discuss about uh, what's coming next and the roadmap for our 2023 around XCPNG and Xen Orchestra. So that's that's it for me. And uh, if we don't have any question, I think this is a wrap for this release. Uh, as usual, thank you for all the tests and all the community that is using our tools. And uh, see you on the next release, in uh, the last release of the year. Uh, and we will have at that time some, you know, uh, classic infography that we like to do at the end of the year. Bye-bye, everyone. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.